So Gotham Knights Season 5 Episode 4 Ruins was a decent episode, there was quite a few cool things that happened in it, yet there was also a couple of things that happened in it that made me think WTF. So let's break this episode down and go ahead with this review. <laughs> What is up Gothamites, welcome to a brand new Gotham Season 5 review and breakdown. Now this is for Episode 4, uh, Ruins, which was a good episode, but yeah, I feel like I have a couple of issues with this, um, especially that ending with Selina and Jeremiah, but the, the episode itself uh, and what they've set up uh, for episodes to come is very interesting. I've enjoyed the Riddler a lot more this episode because of what happened with him. Uh, it was cool to see Lucius Fox get a lot more screen time and a whole bunch of other things. So before I get into this, if you're brand new to this channel, you want to stay up to date with uh, all Gotham episodes, reviews, and news updates, and stuff like that, be sure to subscribe, and also check out some of my other videos on comic book nerdy shows that you may be interested in, and of course, like this video if you do go on to enjoy it, and I want to say thank you guys for all your support on my previous Gotham video, which was the interview with Francesca Root Dodson, who plays Echo, once again, uh, you guys have killed the likes on that, I think it's like over a thousand likes to like one or two or three dislikes, which is just insane, <laughs> and yeah, that interview was a blast, I really enjoyed uh, interviewing Francesca, she was amazing, um, and hopefully I can interview some more actors and actresses out there one day. And also, if you haven't realized, we've got some Boba Talks merch on today, which I haven't worn in a little while, this is actually the prototype version, so it actually looks even better than this. So check out the links in the description if you want to check out some of my merch to help support the channel a little bit more. Oh yeah, and if by some mystery you've missed that Echo interview, by the way, check the cards uh, in this video because it will be in the cards above and in the description. Check that interview out, it was awesome. Moving on. So the beginning of this episode naturally uh, continued from the last episode with that explosion, or should I say post-explosion. Um, now this episode, from what we learned from the promo of this episode, everyone initially is going to be kind of pointing fingers towards each other, like was it Barbara? Would Barbara really do that? Would Penguin really do that? Uh, would said person really do that? So it's a bit of like investigating this episode as to who the hell like killed all those people because it was pretty messed up there are families in there um when all like the civilians were showing at gym they were like oh i had a family in there my wife was in there or something like that and when you really like think past the glossing oh explosion in gotham and you kind of think intricately it's like oh crap actually quite a few people died and this is messed up whoever did this so it really really is important to find out who would be that messed up this episode and that kind of set that whole investigation thing with lucius fox and as i said it was really good to see Lucius Fox this episode. He hasn't had like the whole bunch of screen time throughout Gotham. I mean, when he's been in it, it's been really cool, but I've been wanting him to do a bit more um, than just be a little helper. I've been wanting him to do more stuff with Bruce and hopefully we'll get some more stuff like that this season. But what I really liked about him this episode is that it made the uh, Riddler storyline a bit more interesting for me because I really liked those two going alongside each other, but I'll get into that more in a second. Bruce is still cuffed in that place uh, where Echo was, you know, versus Selena last episode. And I said that was pretty stupid of Selena to do that because regardless, um, you know, Bruce being cuffed there, he could get like killed quite simply and that almost happens but I do have a little bit of an issue here with what happened so Bruce um, is still cuffed there Jeremiah's men come we could say that Echo's men but at, at the end of the day they're still followers of the Church of Jeremiah or whatever and that's when we see some awesome Bruce combat that we actually saw in one of the first trailers for Gotham season 5 that gave it this really cool dark cinematic kind of new feel that I guess they were somewhat insinuating with that whole reboot of season 5 we got ages ago now but what I thought was kind of silly is that that last guy who was coming at him with a gun um I, j I don't know i just felt like that was a bit of a silly writing decision just because jeremiah would go absolutely freaking insane if that guy bruce didn't manage to disarm the guy with a gun because as we all know jeremiah wants bruce very much so alive he wants to prove his love to him uh, and, and his friendship and we'll get into how that was um kind of described in this uh, episode a little bit later by jeremiah himself you can kind of see how this doesn't make a whole bunch of sense here because i'm sure the followers of jeremiah have had it distilled in their head by either echo or jeremiah not to kill bruce wayne uh but at the same time i guess you could insert comic book logic that that guy wasn't going to really kill Bruce but come on he had a gun pointing at him and he was just about to shoot him so so bottom line here guys I'm going to stop talking about this bit but that guy was going to kill Bruce with the gun at the end and I'm pretty sure Jeremiah would have instilled it into the church of Jeremiah followers or Echo do not kill Bruce Wayne whatever you do Jeremiah's got big plans for him but 
for some reason that was kind of thrown out the window here. Now I also found it very interesting, kind of going back a couple of seconds here, that Barbara didn't choose to shoot Penguin. She was going to, and I... I don't know if I truly believed if this, you know, if, if Gotham was real and this was a thing, would she have not... I, re I reckon Barbara would have given into her emotions there. She would have killed him. Now, um, her excuse this episode when she spoke to Jim was that the person who blew up Haven has to be stopped. Um, so I'm guessing, you know, she spared Penguin because obviously he has resources and he can help, you know, uh, find out the person who blew up Haven uh, together with Jim like more the merrier right um, but I still feel like Barbara would have done that now obviously this couldn't happen because Penguin isn't going to die that's just not gonna happen um, so yeah I, I get why it had to happen but I feel like the rage that happened with Tabitha's death um, how she was just gonna kill Penguin at the end of last episode straight up uh, I, I just I don't know why I just don't really believe it but hey it's not like the Penguin's gonna die so I guess I'm gonna just move on now now we knew this was gonna happen in the episode so as well, Penguin arrives at the GCPD to give them guns, um, and then shortly after that, obviously we had them searching for Zaz. We learned this from the promo as well. Um, I did like Jim and um, Penguin partnered together in this episode for as long as they were, since it kind of went south towards the end. But anyway, let's talk about Zaz. Uh, Oswald yelling at Zaz was absolutely hilarious. Uh, very happy to see Victor Zaz back again. Uh, we knew this is the thing, and I will address this later as well. Gotham trailers do give away quite a lot, but a lot of trailers in the industry uh, where it's movies or tv shows it tends to give away a heck of a bunch um because i knew uh, jim was going to take zaz down sure you could guess that anyway but we i saw the very scene where zaz was eating his popcorn uh up where he was sniping um and then jim you know rugby tackles him that was shown in a trailer so i don't know maybe it's just me and i break the stuff down but when you pay as much attention to it as i do you kind of feel like you know what's coming a lot of the time but what i do appreciate and i do fear that this is all we're going to get with zaz in terms of the foreshadowing of his future character is when he said uh, if I blow up a building full of people I'd have my co body covered in sweet sweet scars something like that he said something like that and I thought obviously that's pretty cool because if there's anything that we've wanted through Zaz is more character development um, with scars and everything like that with his actual comic book character we've barely had that in Gotham throughout all of the seasons and unfortunately as I said I think this will be as good as we get um just because there's not many episodes and I don't think Zaz is going to be in it a whole bunch so I wouldn't be surprised if that's all we're going to get mainly with Zaz this season minus a couple of extra things but either way Zaz was sentenced to a death sentence obviously the people want somebody to pay and I get that um and he was very very nearly had his head cut off if it wasn't for the last second and him being pulled away. Um, I found all of this uh, confuffle in the episode interesting. It's totally up Penguin Street. Um, I, I think he knows. That's what I like about it as well. Penguin knows that it might not be him. But when he was getting the generation from the crowd and everything like that, fueling Penguin's ego, I feel like Penguin just wanted the people of Gotham back more than actually finding the truth of who, whoever has to pay for blowing up Haven. Um, so yeah, I like just seeing all of that stuff go on. And then naturally that rubbed Jim up the wrong way. But even though Jim uh, is one of the few, you know, including Bruce and a couple of others like Zaz and Alfred and stuff like... Zaz and Alfred? Bruce and Alfred, sorry. The pinnacles of light this season. I like how this episode still showed Jim's struggle with darkness. For example, when Harvey expressed that the shootout idea, he was just like, don't ever include me in something like that again. Or he just doesn't want any anything to do with it now Harvey is a bit of like he's not a bent cop but he's been and done some certain things even probably more so than Jim even throughout the past few seasons uh, in his history but Jim wanted to, to do a shootout with Zaz um, and I thought this was just a show of power just like Zaz was going towards the gun and then like he's like okay 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 whatever I'm, I'm going um, and then that meant Jim didn't have to do it but I honestly think that Jim was actually serious about if you touch that gun, I will shoot you. It would just solve this problem. We could say that, you know, you tried to kill me because I gave you the chance to. So me shooting you doesn't make me feel as bad. But that is pretty messed up thinking. And I truly believe that Jim has kind of got that far now. He's been worn down a bit in No Man's Land that he would have actually done that if Saz would have taken the gun. So that is pretty disturbing. But we do know that Jim Gordon does have a dark side and Gotham have shown that more than once. Uh, for, for example, just like the situation. Now, as for Edward this episode, I was worried that we would be just 
just getting more of the same stuff, like him waking up around the place. But this episode did make it a lot more interesting for his character. I will always say that I do really like Corey Michael Smith's acting, regardless of the storyline that is kind of feeling a bit rehashy this season. Um, he is fascinating. He does keep me entertained in any of his scenes. Uh, he really he really is the Riddler. He's perfect casting for the role. I did think initially that him walking straight into the GCPD was a bit silly. I was just like, if he's not going to get caught, this is a bit ridiculous. But I did try and add in the factor of that. Okay, but there is quite a few civilians in the GCPD. So him running in like a homeless person isn't necessarily unbelievable. But then Lucius did catch him. So that I did like that. And, you know, obviously Ed was searching for some prison records or whatever because on his hand uh, from the Riddler um, version of himself or that other person, should we say, wrote down that this inmate or whatever knows. I liked how they worked together because obviously Ed used to work for the GCPD and helped solve a lot of crimes. Lucius is very smart himself. So those two paired together... Uh, is a pairing that I didn't actually think of before, but works very, very well. And I have to admit, I did actually suspect, hey, what if this is Ed? I think I may have dropped that somewhere along the way. Uh, but obviously when he saw that lady in the window, and then we saw the number on her apartment door, it was just like, oh, of course. And then she naturally saw the real person who, fl who blew off that RPG into Haven. And that was none other than Ed, except the other version of himself. Um, so that was really, really cool. As I said, I did kind of expect it, and it makes it really messed up. It's made me a lot more interested in the Riddler story arc, even though, as I said, nothing too much has changed in terms of them rehashing stuff, but it is interesting how Ed has gone very, very dark. He really, really has. So now, yeah, I'm actually really excited, despite the rehashy feels, of what kind of other version of Ed is going to come out by the end of this season. Th this will be a version of Ed who murders a whole bunch of people, family, women, and children in Haven. I mean, holy crap, I forgot to say at the beginning, of course, Jim gave his badge, didn't he? I I, I swear I'm remembering this right, to the orphan kid. Uh, and then they gave the badge back to Jim, insinuating that he was, you know, dead in the ruins. Now, I could be wrong here, this is just a little side comment. I swear he was in the filming for the last few episodes or something, so he may not be dead. I do not want to, don't quote me on that, but... They may just be putting off to the audience that they think he's dead at the minute and he may come back for some other reason later down the line. Then, of course, guys, probably a big part of what you want to hear me talk about in this episode is that Selena was following Echo um, uh, to the underground place where they were digging that tunnel uh, from the Soothsayer gang. Now, Jeremiah straight up kills... Um, was it Sykes from the Soothsayer? I, I believe it is, the leader of the Soothsayer gang. And um, obviously, they're still digging the tunnel. And I, I really did enjoy the Jeremiah and Echo scenes in this uh, episode. For example, when they said that Jeremiah would be acting more unhinged this season, that is exactly it. And he was in this episode. For example, I'm sure you didn't miss that when he was talking to himself um, in that room, I felt like I would like to think that this is a bit of Jerome and Jeremiah complex in his head, since Jerome is still very much so a part of Jeremiah. Now, I could be wrong about this, like, canonically. I don't think they're going to explore it massively, but I would like to think when he was talking to himself there, he was a bit of that split kind of personality esque thing. Uh, and in case you didn't really catch exactly what he was saying, it was something like, it's a nice little gift for him. He'll like it. No, he won't in a very Gollum esque kind of way. And then he was just giggling. So essentially what I think he was talking about there is what he's doing down there is that it's a nice little gift for him. Who would he be gifting? That, like whatever he's trying to do here too probably Bruce um he will like it and then like the other version of himself says like no he won't that is very Gollum from Lord of the Rings s kind of split personality talking to each side of himself uh so I definitely feel like that is what they were trying to kind of do with this scene here and that is exactly what I wanted out of Jeremiah this season not just a stone cold chilling version of him but a bit of lunacy and that is exactly what they gave us with those lines there of him talking to himself I really appreciated the whole echo stuff of what you're saying to Jeremiah Jeremiah, he was like, oh, where are all the workers or whatever? And she was like, well, not ev there's not as many as you'd think because not everyone can pass the 38 caliber test of faith. And that is true. When you're going to kill a whole bunch of people and only submit the people who survive to work for your operation, there's probably not going to be too many of them. Uh, but it is like a pretty messed up way of showing devotion, I suppose. Uh, so the people they do have there would be extremely low, I'm guessing. Uh, either way, loved all of that. Um, it did feel very kind of Harley Quinny and Jokery. They even did that dance. Uh, he even did grab her by the neck.
connect, which kind of does foreshadow that abusive -y kind of esky kind of relationship that they have. Um, it did feel very familiar to me in the terms of Joker and Harley-esque way from the comics, and I really dig that. Now, the whole time during this, of course, we knew Selina had um, disguised herself to be one of the workers. She went after Echo because she was probably going to knock her out and grab her stuff. That is exactly what she did. At the same time of this, though, Bruce and Alfred were taking Jeremiah's workers out. I really like the kind of cape swooshing sound effects of like a foreshadowing of Batman taking multiple people out in the darkness from different angles even though it was just Bruce and Alfred working together doing that but if you listen carefully to those sound effects it is very caped crusader doing that himself. Now the bit you're probably all wondering about my take on in terms of what the F happened with between Selena and Jeremiah. She shanked him nine times if I counted correctly like nine stabs uh i like how he was kind of embracing it and even started kind of trolling her and that's when she started stabbing him a whole lot more now is jeremiah dead no um we know he's in uh the future episodes like i could just end the conversation there uh but don't worry guys he's not dead i'm sure many of you are probably trying to think now well how is he going to survive um, well, that's the thing. This is Gotham, right? So I don't think this is an actual death. Like, he's going to be re resurrected and that's how he's coming back. And that's why we know he's in future scenes. Well, first of all, this is kind of what I meant by trailers. So I will say this point and I won't at the same time that they do show too much. For example, we know Jeremiah is in a bunch of future episodes. He kidnaps Alfred. He goes to Ace Chemicals. He fights Bruce at Ace Chemicals. A whole bunch of things, right? But at the same time... That's fine. I feel like showing future parts of the season is fine. So what I would say is doing this death was kind of pointless or like fake death on screen because, well, if you're just going to, if everyone knows he's in future episodes and we know he's not going to die, then why have Selena do that to him? It would have just been cool if Selena absolutely floored him or decked him or beat the crap out of him. But I wouldn't have personally made the decision to kill him off just because we know it's not going to really stick. But I guess that does open a mystery in terms of how does he survive. I'm not entirely sure myself. I really don't think they're actually going to use clay face or anything like that. But how does he survive nine bloody uh, wounds from a knife? I don't know. I'm waiting for Gotham's explanation on that the next episode. If they don't explain it well, I will call it out and say it was pretty stupid. Um, because, you know, nine bloody stabs is very, very bad. And no, I don't think they're going to use Lazarus Waters or anything like that to anyone who is wondering. But what do I have to say about the scene other than that? I guess I'm happy for Selena in the sense that she kind of got her, you know, revenge in a way. But I, other than that, I don't think it was that cool because, as I said, I already know what's going to happen. We know Jeremiah's coming back. So it wasn't that impressive as maybe what you're thinking I would have found it. But... I feel like I've explained it kind of well enough as to why that is the case. Um, but let me know how you think Jeremiah is going to be absolutely fine. As I said, I really don't think it's a clone or that, that version of him was a clone. I don't think it was uh, Lazarus Waters or uh, Clayface or anything like that. But yeah, I still can't explain how he survives nine stab wounds. We're just going to have to wait and see till the next episode. But Jeremiah is going to be fine. Do not worry about that. And lastly, everyone, Jim and Barbara get it on. We all knew this was happening uh, this season. Uh, it was teased at the beginning of the episode where she nearly kisses him. Oh, no, was that in the same? No, I think that's in the same scene. And then, like, he grabs her, of course. Um, so this, guys, I do suspect will make Barbara pregnant. I just think that's... We've been talking about this for a long time now. We've been talking about this since we even got this, this scene teased in the trailer. Um, it, it will set up, like, a future kind of Barbara Gordon I mean it, it, you'd have to assume it's Barbara Gordon the baby uh kind of thing uh there is another time jump in the middle of the season which I assume will be by a gap of months so maybe if Barbara does get pregnant she would have had the baby by then um I do remember seeing a baby like in behind the scenes photos or something like that being carried around by various people can't confirm whose baby that is but this is all pointing to the fact that they're trying to probably set up that uh baby Gordon you know kind of future thing and then um barbara will be kind of out the picture i'm sure for sacrificing herself at the end which leaves baby barbara gordon to gordon himself and she probably and he probably names the baby barbara sorry this is getting a bit complicated now because she must sacrifice her life for the baby and jim or something like that i feel like this storyline is very much so predictable um but let me know what you think in the comments down below do you think that was just a little hookup but I think that hookup will have consequences. Other than that, though, everyone, uh, it was a decent episode. Um, there was a couple of things that I thought was silly, as I said, like killing Jeremiah or like faking the death wasn't necessary. We all know he's going to be fine. Um, that's a consequence of, you know, showing a bunch of the season, I guess. Uh, and other than that, also the thing about 
Echo's uh, men or Jeremiah's men trying to kill Bruce at the beginning. That was also a bit silly too since it completely defeats the point of what Jeremiah, their master, would want. Um, but other than that, you know, I don't even think that's being nitpicky. The episode was quite strong other than that. Uh, you know, we had good stuff between everyone else and all the other characters. Next episode is called Peña Dura. Everyone who's a fan of Bane should know what that means. So I guess he's going to be somewhat introduced in that. Obviously, I'll have the promo um for that episode up within either today or tomorrow aside from that though guys if you enjoyed this video why not give it a like as it really shows your support for the channel uh grab yourself some boba merch in the description the links should be there i'd really appreciate it if you guys checked it out as well as my social media why not follow me on there on instagram i'm becoming more active on that and twitter as well i do have a patreon but other than that guys thank you so much for watching hope you got myself have a lovely rest of your day and i'll see you in the next video goodbye